Hello, welcome to Cycling Tips. I am Dave. I've made it off my balcony this week. I've come down to the communal gand because, well, it's the only place where there's a bit of, bit of gravel. Because this episode's going to be, well, it's not about being stuck indoors. It's about getting out and about. It's a video about a few of my favourite uh, gravel pieces of kit that I've been using or were using prior to lockdown. Now, here in France, come May the 11th, we're gonna be allowed out and about on the bikes again, which is good news. But obviously there's been plenty of coffee shops shut, so that money you would have spent on them expensive brews might have been squirreled away, and you might be looking for something to spend it on. First off, let's start with safety, and the new Met All Road helmet. This thing was released a couple of months back. It is Met's first gravel specific helmet. And well, it's pretty damn nice for the 75 euros that they're asking for. It's got a rear light on there for out and about on the road. So yeah, safely seen. It's also got a snap off visor, which is easy to do when it's on the head. Boom, boom. Do you need a visor out and about? Personally, I like to just take a cap with me. If not, Met do do basically exactly the same helmet but in a road version that actually has a MIPS liner. This one doesn't. The road version is called the Vinci. It retails at 100 euros because it does have that MIPS liner in. Personally, I'd go for that one over this one. Next up, shoes. And these are specialised new Recon 3.0. I haven't done bags and miles on them because I only got them a few days before lockdown. First up, the sole on these are full carbon, but it has a new technology. The Carbon Stride Toe Flex technology. This allows for a little bit of movement when you are walking in them. And obviously when you're walking in them, you need a bit of grip. And well, somebody in Specialised is clearly an um, industrial metal fan because they've named that rubber compound Slipknot. But slip you will not because it is really grippy. And for the upper, we've got a full, fully welded upper, two Boa L6 dials with a Velcro strap, keeps your foot in place, and being specialised, it's all body geometry stuff. Retail price is about 220 euros, 308 Australian dollars, and 225 US dollars. Right, next up, if you want to look good on the bike, you've got to have a good pair of sunnies, haven't you? And I've been rocking two pairs over the past, I suppose, year now. First up, something from Italy again, your Rudy Project Defender. These are a set of sunglasses you may have seen on the faces of uh, Nibbly before he went to Trek. The Bahrain McLaren team at the start of the year, obviously, before they went into lockdown. I have removed the rubber bumper that they come with because I found that it restricted peripheral vision. Removing that rubber bumper though does mean the lenses wobble just a slight bit when you squeeze them. I haven't found that it rattles out on the bike though. Even though I've got the laser blue lens in there now, I have mainly been using their photochromatic Impact X lens while out on the bike. That lens does get pretty dark though. Now I do know Rudy Project are releasing a new set of road sunnies uh, or might have already, which might address a few of the niggly problems that I had with these. If you're not so keen on the um, retro stylings of the Rudy Project, how about trying a set of the um, new Oakley Radar EV advanced lenses? The advanced bit is down to this fancy nose piece. An item I thought was, well, at first a bit of a gimmick. It pushes the lens away from your face to allow for, well, a little bit more ventilation. At first, like I say, I thought this was a gimmick, but after getting out on some very hot days, climbing up some alpine passes around it, I actually found it pretty useful. Before I get on to the bike that I've been playing about on, or was playing about on, Let's talk clothing, and it's going to be another specialised item. An item I didn't think I'd be talking about because, well, I used to find specialised clothing, shall we say, a little bit crappy. But the new stuff that they're making seems to be really, really nice. And the Roubaix shorts, well, they've impressed me. Loads of pockets, super comfy pad, and, well, I think I'm a convert to the old... Um, 
cargo pocket. I've surprised myself with what I've been stuffing in there. Now, if it is getting chilly where you are and you still want to get out and about on the gravel roads and you're after a set of tights with pockets in, how about trying something from Sportful? I'm not going to try and pronounce the name, it's called I used them this winter and I found the pocket exceptionally useful, especially when you're climbing up a mountain, you're getting hot, whip the gloves off, stuff them in the pocket, there's no faffing about in the back of the pockets hoping that you've put them in right with cold hands. Another brand I will give a shout out to clothing wise is, well local company to here, Mavic. Uh, they have a limited range of gravel stuff under the all road name. And I used a few of their bits, not just last summer, but this winter. One of their items, their vest, got in my top 10 items of 2019. <laughs> Hello, what have you got? You got bubbles? Last but not least, the bike, the Trek Checkpoint ALR5. Now this thing came into my possession back in November, after some uh, scumbag decided that my previous gravel bike was more suited to them so Trek kindly lent me this it was supposed to go back just before the lockdown but has obviously stayed in my possession because well the bike shop I was supposed to take it back to is shut I had upgraded a few bits and pieces on it but it's back to its original state now I do know the guys reviewed in the recent gravel field test the model below this. This is the frame with them dropouts that you can uh, swap from a normal drive chain to a single speed. I have kept it as a normal drive chain with a 105 group set. A group set that I think is um, very well suited to gravel riding. If you knacker it, it's not too expensive to replace the parts. All the finishing components, all the wheels, all the tyres are from Bontrager. Trek's in-house brand. It's got a plethora of mounts on there for fenders and uh, bottle cages, bags, racks. And as Kaylee said, in the field test version, gravel bikes and aluminium go hand in hand. It's not too much of a worry if you ding it out on the trails, unlike a carbon bike where you might have a few tears over it. It's not the lightest bike out there, but all in all, for I think 2,000 euros what this costs, it's a pretty goddamn good buy if you're looking for sort of a, an entry to mid-range gravel bike now there is going to be more gravel videos coming your way from me well probably not in the near future but once we're allowed out and about like normal because i'm accumulating a few bits and pieces to build up um, a dream gravel bike i've got some bars from richie and a stem i have uh, some syncross wheels in to test and uh, there's something else stuff from muck off actually but until the next video all i ask you to do is join the conversation below let us know what you think of me gravel pics from this video also give a subscribe like all the normal nonsense and until next time thank you for watching and stay safe